Welcome to the Practical Enneagram. Returning in this episode to what is now the old style of interview format where I just have a relatively normal paced conversation with someone. In this case, the amazing storyteller that is Enneagram teacher Catherine Grant, who will forever in my mind at least be the wing woman, as it's from her that I learned some more expansive theory to do with the Enneagram wings. Catherine is currently leading a online workshop Uh, where she teaches the Enneagram using the metaphor of Odysseus and his travels along the wine dark sea. Lovely way to sit and inquire with the Enneagram under the guidance of an experienced teacher. You can find out about Catherine's course using the links in the episode notes. the Enneagram in 1994, Mm -hmm. I was dragged kicking and screaming to a four-day intensive and um, have never let go. You know, it was just like, yes, this is what I need to know. And this is what I need to help people find out about. So it was a um, a huge moment for me. Mm -hmm. And there was, and as the friend and I went together and then went home, there was a huge earthquake which semi destroyed her house and so we can always remember when the earthquake was and when I started with the Enneagram because they were a few days apart and I thought I wonder if I caused that earthquake by learning so much about the Enneagram so I've done workshops and um, study groups for a long time I did study groups I went traveled up and down the coast of California with people who had been to a workshop or a whole day kind of teaching. And then we formed study groups from there and met once a month. Mm -hmm. One of the groups went for seven years. Wow. I know. And it was, it was so amazing because Mm -hmm. the people in that group got to know each other better and better, and they were more comfortable and they shared from much deeper places and Mm -hmm. Um, it was, it was amazing. We met in people's living rooms, Mm. different one every month. And, um, I wish we could go back to that, but I think that is a bygone era. I think that is over. Um, so I did that for a long time and then started working with Jerry Mm -hmm. co-teaching his training, Mm -hmm. which was an incredible experience and an incredible opportunity for me. Um, and then this thing called the pandemic mm. where you couldn't meet with people. And so I started working with Joanna Contrell at the Journey Center in California. Mm. And one of the things we're doing this year together is the Travels with Odysseus, which mm. is also nicknamed um, Sailing the Wine Dark Seas. Yeah. And um, there's so much written about the Odyssey. Mm -hmm. And so many people have interesting takes on the characters and what happens. And the whole Aegean Sea, which they floated around on and had, you know, all kinds of things happening, is a wine dark sea. Mm -hmm. So that's where that tag comes from. Um, but not everybody uses it. I just think it's so clever. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And you just reach over the side of the boat and get some wine, you know, (laughs) I don't think that's the way it works, but in any event, um, I had met Michael Goldberg, I don't know, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, we just hit it off, you know, and, and kind of helped each other and did a couple of presentations at the international conference together. Mm -hmm. And he wrote the book travels with Odysseus in 2005. And I was addicted. I became absolutely addicted to how astonishing it was, how clever it was. Mm -hmm. Now, 
the more I've, and I've read a lot of books around the Odyssey. I reread the Odyssey and I read lots of books that mostly have been written by women Mm. about the women in um, that whole story, which gives it, of course, a whole different flavor, you know, Mm. makes different heroes and different villains. But the thing that I, Michael pointed out is that the journey from Troy to Ithaca has all of these experiences Mm. and the experiences that Odysseus encounters at these different stops along the way are instructive about what happens with Enneagram styles. Mm-hmm. That there's um, there's information for us there about what happened to Odysseus and the crew and how they responded. And if you're whatever style you are on the Enneagram, there's a lesson to be learned mm-hmm. and many lessons to be learned as we understand we are all of those styles and they all influence us particularly if we let them or encourage them. Mm-hmm. So um, again, after I, the book was published in 2005, I just looked that up and I thought it's not a brand new idea, no, but no. it is still fresh and mm-hmm. new. Mm-hmm. And so I teach it um, depending on how much time I have mm-hmm. in different ways, either a plow through like we're kind of going to do today mm-hmm. with um, a taste of each of the, the stops along the way mm-hmm. or um, with the journey center with my friend Joanna we are doing it over 10 months oh. once a month stopping for um, a whole session which is usually two hours yeah. for each of the styles and each of the stop and we ask questions about our relationship to those styles. My um, my website is Enia Quest. Mm-hmm. Both Enia and Quest are capitalized, but I don't think it's important. Dot mm-hmm. org. Mm. So if you go there and you go on events, sailing the wine dark sea shows up, mm. and then there's more information there. You can register for all ten, even though we've started them. And if you do that, you can get the recordings included in your price. Mm, brilliant. Uh, and I will put the link in, in the episode notes. This is such a unique way to learn the Enneagram. Is this um, the new students? Who's it best for? I think it's for anybody. Mm. I think there's so much information there that even if you don't know anything about the Enneagram, mm-hmm. And you just follow along with the trials and tribulations and the solutions, you start to say, huh, I I think that's what I would do. Or Mm -hmm. I've encountered that. Um, It's so on the ground Mm -hmm. that you don't have to know much. Um, I think what happens is the more you know, the more you start to argue with it. That's okay. And that's okay. You know, there's... um, there's something there for everybody. Mm. And the way I teach is to present the story, and ask questions. Where are you in this? And people say, well, I'm not a six. Yeah, you are. <laughs> no, yeah, you are. We have all of these and we have all of these experiences. It might be, not be our primary place to land, mm. but who hasn't been bigger like the Cyclops, who is eight-ish and brutish, mm. who hasn't behaved like that? Mm-hmm. And what is the solution? How do we move forward? Who hasn't held on to grief and emotionality way too long, just like our dear friends, the fours, mm-hmm. to do? Mm-hmm. But we've all done it. Mm-hmm. And now what? How do we how do we move forward? What is the lesson? Mm. that we can take from each of these places and show up more cleanly. I like that that expression. Um, we're not going to show up as a one. 
but we can, to me, one's our integrity and mm-hmm. usefulness. Mm-hmm. And we can all use a big dose of integrity. And I think most of us do want to be useful in mm-hmm. some way for our families, for our communities, for our world, that gets a little bit big, but that that drive to do something to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So each of the stops along the way has a different challenge, different good guys and bad guys, and ultimately lands us back into ourselves, which is home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ithaca is the theoretical home. It's actually Odysseus's home, but it's our home too. When we come back to ourselves, what's important? What have we been ignoring? What do we need to take up again? Mm -hmm. Um, Particularly as we enter or coast along in that second half of life, Mm -hmm. when it's time for us to give back instead of just taking. Mm -hmm. So is that enough for right now? (laughs) Yeah, that's great. Um, I should know this because I've listened, I've definitely listened to an interview with him, but I'm curious about Michael's type. What is Michael Goldberg's Enneagram type, Catherine? He lives in the Ark of the Seven. Oh, he lives in the Ark of the yes. Seven. Beautiful. Yes. So yes. This is a- and which is what made it so easy for us to get along and, right. and yeah. share our enthusiasm for certain things. He's, yeah. he's very scholarly, quite serious about everything. Mm. And then, so I make him laugh. <laughs> is he a different instinct we've not spoken about that at mm-hmm. least not recently that i remember mm-hmm. so um i'm i'm not gonna divulge no, anything because i really don't know mm-hmm. but he's done a lot of scholarly work with mythology mm-hmm. and um story which is something i do as well when i yeah. teach i'm always telling stories um yeah. <laughs> because i think I truly believe, I don't just think it, I truly believe that when we hear a story, no matter what the story is, we're like, hmm, there's a piece in there that I could have gotten caught with, I could have used, I could have done. Um, So whatever it is, myth and tales and old, old stories of, um, that used to be teaching stories for children mm. um, have stuff for us. Yeah. And yeah. so I I tell stories. Yeah. I think they help us to learn, don't they? Um, this is a really beautiful way to bring it to life, I think. So let's get into it. Okay. The Trojan War has ended, mm-hmm. lasted 10 years. They rescued Helen. Whether or not she wanted to be rescued, we really don't know. Mm-hmm. But Odysseus and his crew, and there were theoretically 720 men that left with him. Mm-hmm. You know, that that number is theoretical, yeah. but okay. <laughs> so they left to get back to Ithaca, which should have taken them six weeks. Mm-hmm. And um, it was 595 or 575 nautical miles. It's not very far. Mm. It took them 10 years. Wow. I know. They kept running into problems. So that's what the the, the broad outline of the story. They mm-hmm. left Troy. They were the conquering heroes. They were the big guys, the soldiers, the, you know, manly men. And um, their first stop was a small island, and they raped and pillaged and took all the stuff and killed people because they were still in that we are the conquerors mm-hmm. mode. Mm-hmm. The next stop they made was um, to Lotus Land. Mm. I don't know that, that that's not the title of the island, but they sent a few men to go and find out what was on the island. Could they live there? Could they stop? And the sailors were offered Lotus. Now, we can think of all kinds of things that that might have been, Mm. but they ingested the lotus and fell asleep. They forgot they wanted to go home. They self-forgot. They lost desire. Mm. They lost momentum. 
they no longer had a sense that things were important. Mm. You know, whatever. Mm. Um, Are we in not, nine land? Is this in nine land? Are you? Yes. Yes, yes. we're in nine yes. land. Yes, yes, we're in nine land. And um, I mean, and, and for us now in this time frame, we all have a lotus. Mm. Mm-hmm. Too much television. Yep. Too much food, too much alcohol, too many games on our computers, too, too much of something that deadens, deadens our desire. Mm-hmm. And um, all of those things can be a type of lotus. Mm-hmm. So Odysseus re- figures out that his people didn't come back. So he goes on to the island. He finds them, you know, drugged out under the trees you know, smoking, drinking, whatever they were doing. Um, And he ties him up, drags him back to the ship, Mm. ties him to the oars, let's get going, let's get going. And that's what we all need to do Mm. when we get stuck in those places of, oh, it's not important. Mm. I don't matter. It doesn't matter. We need to get into our bodies Mm. grab our oar and start rowing Mm. we don't have to know where we're going exactly we just have to know we have to go it's important for all of us because it happens to all of us but for the nines it's just crucial Mm. to get over that um drugged out place of it doesn't matter i don't matter it's no big deal and, you know, all of those shrug your shoulders kinds of things. So they head off again. They land on a little island, you know, because they're always having to eat and drink and sleep and all those things. And um, they see another island not too far away, which looks beautiful, mm. green and lush and almost being able to see fruit hanging from the trees. And they decide, well, maybe we should go there. But Odysseus is getting a little bit more street smart. Mm-hmm. He figures he'll just take a small crew. Oh, check it out. Yeah, don't send those guys. They're all going to get drugged out. <laughs> so he, I believe he takes 12 people. Some of these numbers are not precisely in the original Homer poem. Right. So, you know, you, not, you can't argue with some of the generalizations mm-hmm. um, that are made. So mm-hmm. they land. Nobody's around. They decide to go and explore. They find a cave, which is huge, huge, big opening in the cave. And they go in. Nobody's home. But they're like, wow, look at these shelves. They're just full of wine and cheese and bread and wine wine and wine and wine and cheese. But the shelves are pretty high. This must be a tall person. Or... Maybe they have a ladder, but they don't see a ladder. So they help themselves. Mm. And they sit down and they start drinking and eating the cheese. And the owner comes home. And he is the Cyclops. Now, the Cyclops is one of the most widely known episodes Mm. of the Odyssey. Everybody knows the one-eyed, big, drooling, sloppy dude. Mm. so he, when, when I'm teaching this, when people are reading it, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, the Cyclops, he's a bad guy. Well, I just, I asked this question of my, my people, my people, my people. Let's just suppose you come home from work mm-hmm. and you find 13 men with their feet up on your table eating your bread, eating your cheese, and drinking your wine. How happy are you about that? (laughs) Not at all. So when the Cyclops has a negative reaction to these men in his cave devouring his supplies, I think we're crazy to expect he's going to go, hey, nice to see you. Come on in. Spend the time with me. So, um, There's a place there where I think we need to have some empathy Mm. for the Cyclops. Mm -hmm. 
and be sad about what happens to him, but also to look at what happens when you're too big. So the Cyclops doesn't believe that he's in any threat. He's, I mean, he's huge. And the Greeks are just normal sized puny human beings. Mm -hmm. What kind of threat is that? So he relaxes a little bit. He actually takes a couple of them and goes, bonks their head against the cave wall and eats them raw. Um, he's not a real good host. <laughs> they haven't been very good guests either. That's true. And they demand guest gifts from, from uh, Polyphemus, who is, that's his name, Polyphemus the Cyclops. And he says, nah, no. Nah. What are you kidding me? He said, well, you better be careful because we know Zeus and Zeus is our buddy. And he says, who cares? <laughs> we Cyclops don't give a fiddle about the gods. Not, we don't care. Mm -hmm. So that should be their first indication that they're in more trouble than they think they are. So they, he eats two of them, he falls asleep, he drinks his wine, he falls back on his back and they hide in the cave and on and on. And there's a couple of important points about day two, mm -hmm. but um, so they're hiding and they, he rolls big stone over the cave entrance. Mm -hmm. I'm like, huh. That's a pretty big stone. I wonder if we could move that. And they decide they can't. So everybody says, we're going to kill those slug ups. Well, there's a conundrum. If they kill the Cyclops, they're trapped in the cave. Okay. If they don't do something, they're going to get eaten. You know, two down, 10 to go. Mm -hmm. Um. So there has to be something that they figure out. Now, this is where we start to see that Odysseus has a brain and can figure things out and think things through. So he says, well, we're going to have to figure out how to make it possible for the Cyclops to open that door and let us out. Mm. So they take a, there's a pole in there. I always think like a, um, vaulting pole, you know, do, 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 they're running along. Uh, so they get that and they start to sharpen it a little bit and they hide it. So in the morning, Polyphemus wakes up, he sees that they're still there, he grabs a couple more men for breakfast, and then he opens, yeah, I know, and he eats them raw. Um, maybe he's a vegetarian and raw meat just seems better. So he opens the cave, takes his sheep and his goats and out for the day and then closes the cave. And they are now trapped. They have to figure out what to do. They have to figure out how to use his strength to their advantage. Mm. He comes home, um, talks about who are you? You know, these exchanges go back and forth. And Odysseus actually says, I am no man. Um, he says it in Greek. <laughs> um, so it's kind of the place where he puts down his ego entirely. Mm. When we think back just a few weeks, he was the big guy. He mm. won the war in Troy. Now he's like, no, no, I'm nobody. No big deal. And it, of course, saves his life. Mm. Polyphemus comes home, rolls the little thing, you know, closes the cave, sits down, has some wine, has some cheese, and um, says, so what is your name, you puny little Greek? <laughs> and Odysseus says, no man. So either later that night, um, they gave him, they gave him some celebratory wine, which was so thick, you almost had to chew it. <laughs> so I know, I know. So he just gets zonked very quickly, falls asleep. And they have been sharpening that post, that long pole mm -hmm. all day. So they're sure he's asleep. 
And then here's the here's the vaulting thing, you know. Have you ever seen pole vaulters? They run, yeah. they're doing that. They just boom, push the poles and flip over the thing. And that's exactly what they do with Polyphemus right into his eye. So he ends up screaming, of course, rightfully. Mm-hmm. A few neighbors come over. Mm-hmm. The Cyclops are all very independent. They don't have a lot of social cohesion. So they're saying, Polyphemus, Polyphemus, you okay in there? Is somebody hurting you? Is somebody bothering you? And he says, no, man. No man is bothering me. <laughs> okay, well, then we'll leave. Almost like a Marx Brothers thing. You know, that, I don't know what, the um, comedy capers. Yeah. So they leave. In the um, Polyphemus is one-eyed. They figure out if they tie themselves under the biggest rams and sheep and goats and all that, they can get out of the door in the morning when Polyphemus opens the cave door rock. Mm -hmm. Um, And somebody, of course, has to go last because you can tie each other only until there's only one left. I know, but Odysseus is so smart. So he figures it out. And as Polyphemus opens the cave in the morning and all of his animals run out, he runs his hand across their back, Mm. never checking to see if anything is underneath. Mm. And that's a place where we learn that by and large, eights who are in their, what's Tom Condon's word, in their... um, Um, In their trance? Yes, very good. don't have much awareness of the unconscious. Mm. They're so sure of their own bigness and abilities and capabilities. They don't think there might be there's an, an insight or mm. under something. Um, so they all get out and, you know, Polyphemus is, is furious that he can't find them. They run towards the shore. They have this little boat there untie themselves and each other, get in the boat, push off from shore. Now Polyphemus is come, oh, oh, come running down. And Odysseus gets a little ways away and he, and it happens. What happens when we um, encounter an eight and we grab our um, insufficient power mm. and get to the taunt. So they basically, they get out a little ways from shore Mm -hmm. And Odysseus says, I, Odysseus, am the one that blinded you. Now you know who I am. Because Mm -hmm. not no man, I'm the great hero from Troy. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that gives Polyphemus somebody to blame, somebody to call to accounts, Mm -hmm. because he has the name. Now, we also find out that his father is Poseidon. I know, I know. I'm like, wait, wait, where did that come from? The master of the deep. Yes. And so Polyphemus says, please kill him. Mm. You know, shipwreck him. Do something. Stand up for your, your son here. And if you can't do that, just drown everybody else and let him arrive home battered by himself and without resources Mm. poseidon goes okay that sounds like a good deal so from that point through the end of the odyssey poseidon bugs odysseus all the time he's Um, always you know sending a lightning and mm. storms and seas and then ultimately um Odysseus does arrive home alone, Mm. but he's got a lot to go through first. Mm. So the troops set off, and their next stop is an island, Aeolia, that floats. It floats. It floats. It doesn't have a secure, constant location. Bobbles around on the waves. Now they get there and everybody's having fun. They're eating, they're drinking, they're dancing. It's a grand party. And the grand party 
never stops. Mm, of course. <laughs> I know I'm like, yeah, I'm in a net. <laughs> What's the problem? What's the problem? So this is the land of perpetual lightness, mm-hmm. ignoring the dark, um, running from it, running from pain, um, starting to sound like my own island. <laughs> it is the island of zevenness. Mm-hmm. And um, there's great, great vision that sevens have. But what has to happen for sevens and for the crew as they leave Aeolia, they have to make a commitment to the vision. And that's what they forget. So they're there for about a month, eating, drinking, you know, wine, cheese, and bread. And um, the I was going to say the president. He's not the president, but king, the king of, it's Aeoli, I think is his name. Mm-hmm. I'm really good with Greek. Really good. Um, he gives Odysseus a gift. Mm-hmm. And it's a goat skin that is tied with silver thread. And inside of that goat skin are three of the winds. So he leaves Zephyr wind, the west wind, out. Mm-hmm. And that is what will push Odysseus's ship right back to Ithaca, no stops, short order. He'll get there in a couple of days, no problem. Mm-hmm. So they get in the ship and off their ships and off they go. Um, and Odysseus is driving. I guess that's not the right term. Mm-hmm. Piloting, but yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. And they go along for several days, and all of a sudden, they can see Ithaca in the distance. They can visualize, they can almost smell the fires. They can taste home cooking. They can imagine they are back in their homes. I mean, they're, wow, Mm. isn't that the very greatest thing? only if you keep going so Odysseus has been driving the whole time mm-hmm. and he's like oh wow look at I can see my goat herd up on the mountain and ah this is, oh man and he takes a little nap <laughs> he falls asleep and in myth and legend when the hero falls asleep we know that something is coming mm. And he sleeps. His men say, well, I know that, you know, those bags of, of were, you know, wind. We think they're gold and silver and jewels. And, and Odysseus is keeping it for himself. Greedy little guy that he is. It turns out that greed tends to be a big deal when they get to um, Circe. Mm-hmm. So they open up the bag. Let all the winds out. And because they've been contained, they tend to whirlwind Mm. and they spin the ship around and send it right back to Aeolia, which is now in a different location because it floats. It's not secure. It doesn't settle. It's not attached. Um, And they land and the king and Odysseus goes, well, you know, you were good about those winds last time. Could you do that little trick again? And the king says, no, no, I did it for you once. And if the gods hate you so much, I'm not getting involved. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can't blame them. So two of the lessons in that for me as a seven-ish person is if I have a vision of something and I'm very good at that, yeah. my issue is follow through, mm-hmm. make a commitment, take it to the end. And if it fails, I've still gone a distance. I've done something that's made me smarter, better, whatever. And I can start again in a different direction. But to, to have a commitment... And we do know from most of the literature that sevens have a problem with commitment. Mm -hmm. Um, 
the one thing that was most powerful for me when I first learned about the travels with Odysseus is the island is showing the, the everybody who reads about it that you don't know where you are. Mm. The island floats. Mm -hmm. And sevens and most five, sixes, and sevens ask the question, where am I? So are you big like the Cyclops? Mm. Are you overreaching and actually tiny like the sixes that are next door, the Laestragonians? Mm -hmm. You go back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. Now, on a personal sense, I grew up not knowing if I was the smartest one, mm. the most accomplished one, the best athlete, or the worst. And it was never, hey, you know, I can inhabit this. Some places I'm going to be best and some places I'm going to not be so best. <laughs> yeah. so, until I read about the Aeolians and the floating and the back and forth and the ins insecurity, I never understood that dynamic for myself. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And so this was like, you know, the light bulbs going off. And I yeah. thought, finally, I have a handle on what that is for mm -hmm. me. And I think for many or if not most or all sevens. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. I just don't know. Where am I? Where am I? I've always found like the whole wings thing pretty goofy, like the way that people identify with one over the other. I can't see a, a need to choose one. But anyway, that's that's me being um, talking about myself. Go well, ahead. and OK, we'll talk about wings and people yeah. can just stay on the island floating around or not, <laughs> you know, and they can come to the rest of the year by registering through anyquest.org and right. Journey Center. And if you register for the whole year, you get the recordings from the first three. Perfect. So okay. April will be at the Laestragonians, stop the number four. Right. Okay. So you can you can do this. Yeah. So Brilliant. okay, the, the theory of the wings. Yeah. Part of Michael's training and studying was with Oscar Ichazo. <clears throat> and Oscar Chazo is credited with this idea about wings. Oh, I didn't know. And his theory coming forward, and I find it very, very helpful, mm -hmm. is that we are not a dial, we're not a stop, we're not a dot, we're not a point, we are a stretch mm -hmm. between our left wing, which is clockwise and our right wing, which is counterclockwise. We're stretched between those two energies. Um, and we, and that creates the space that we inhabit as whatever type we are. So mm -hmm. four, seven, which is what I am, mm -hmm. I am stretched between, I'm the big one, yeah. like the eight, I'm powerful, et cetera, et cetera. Or like the six, I'm scared. I'm afraid. I have to figure out how to get out the door in the morning. Should mm -hmm. I take my umbrella? No. What if it doesn't rain? Then I'll carry my umbrella all day and I won't need it. And how am I going to do that? And we're stretched between those two dynamics. And that's just a simple thing. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of the eight and a lot of the six that sevens, if they're honest with themselves, feel all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What it creates is a person in the middle who doesn't know where they're located. Mm -hmm. Just like that island that's floating around in the sea, we don't know where we're located. Are we the big one? Are we the little one? I mm -hmm. don't know. Are we the big one? Are we the little one? And it creates a style that basically wants to stay up out of depth. Have you ever tried to go deep with a seven? Um. 
<laughs> You're putting me on the spot now. Have I tried? No, that's to... okay. Yes, I have, and it's, I've been successful with it. But I have to say, I've I've encountered a lot of um, mature sevens. Right, right, and and that whole idea of I have I have to have fun and mm. the life's a party and where are the balloons is as sevens mature those kinds of statements here's another one am i saying torque my liver <laughs> i mean they're just oh that was true it's not true yeah um and that should be something we're learning all the time about ourselves is mm. it was true and now it's not true but there's aspects of it that are true mm. am i afraid yes have i always been afraid yes did I ever admit that? Not until about 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's been growth in both directions, learning to modulate the power of the eight mm. and attend to the warnings, the, the um, warning bells and lights and stuff that of the six because there are things we need to be aware of Mm -hmm. and have a on guard sort of relationship with Mm -hmm. and that's in the six so for me that explanation of being pulled between those two energies made perfect sense yep Yep. And when I teach it and people are like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they <laughs> listen and we do exercises and we make drawings and all of a sudden you can people, you can see and feel people going, oh yeah, mm-hmm. there it is. There it is. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I really, 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 really hate <laughs> is when people say, um, I'm a thus and so, and I have a thus wing. Yeah, yeah, and it happens to me a lot as Mm. a teacher. Mm. And my first sarcastic, cynical type of response is, "So where'd the other wing go?" (laughs) At one point, I had a woman come to a training, and she walked in, and she was like, "I'm a nine. And I tested as a nine and I got, you know, all these high scores on nine. And then I got really high scores on one and a zero on eight. Oh, wow. Now I think she thought I'd be impressed. <laughs> um, so my first question to her was, what did you do with your eight? Yeah. How do you stand up if you don't have some of that kind of, power and belief in yourself and all those things that some eights have in excess but most healthy eights that have done some work are steadfast and um magnanimous they reach out and help the rest of us puny greeks (laughs) (laughs) so that that's the way i teach is if you don't have two wings that you honor and that you access and you bring into your life, how are you going to fly? Mm. Do you think this is important when it comes to the personal growth work to work with the wings? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your clockwise wing, that clockwise wing helps you most in the first part of your life. Oh. It answers the questions that your own style has trouble with. Mm. It has the energy that you don't have if you just sit here. Yeah. So then as you're trying to mature and come home and be a better person, um, it really helps to turn to your right mm-hmm. and access your counterclockwise wing. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. And because you've ignored it, you've been running around in the circle away from it. Mm. And when you turn and you look, um, wow. Mm. Wow. I mean, for for years, I thought, oh, six is, you know, really blah, 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 you know. (laughs) And when I stopped and I listed the things that scared me Mm. and I started writing on a piece of paper and I ran out of room. 
So I grabbed a roll of paper towels. Wow. <laughs> you know, shoo, shoo, more, more. Um, I thought, okay, what is there that I need to know? Yeah. Yep. What do I need to do to be a three dimensional person, mm-hmm. not a two dimensional person? Um, and I think we, I think we all need to do that. We need to turn back to get home to ourselves, which is one of the things, you know, that language is so powerful in the Odyssey. Mm-hmm. He's going home to Ithaca, home to Penelope, mm-hmm. and home to his destiny. This is important, isn't it, for you in the way that you teach? Or yeah. I'm sure, yeah. Can you say a bit more about that well I think one of the things that probably bugs people that study with me (laughs) is they have they think they have it all figured out well I'm a this and I'm a this Mm. or we're studying something and they say well like I did with fours when I first started the Enneagram I thought oh my god what what is the purpose here (laughs) and now I just love fours (laughs) They bring so much to me. Mm. And where is the four in me? Mm. You know, where is where is the nine in, in, in the five? Where is a person who is two and loving and caring? Where's the eight? Yeah. The person who can stand up for themselves, who can set a boundary. We have it all. Mm-hmm. And we don't acknowledge that at our peril. We become a person who stands on one point, yeah, tippy toe in one place with no support. Mm. So when you bring in um, one of the things I'm proudest of, if I may, <laughs> is the understanding of the four ish qualities that help me. Mm. Um, I became a watercolor artist Mm -hmm. only because I could say, I know I can do this. Mm -hmm. If I were a four, I would have been painting my entire life, but I can (laughs) go out here and do some different kinds of things to build up and support who and how I am. Mm -hmm. And when I moved away from my daughter and granddaughter a number of years ago, Mm -hmm. I left all my watercolors with my granddaughter and paper and brushes. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to leave that brush because it was too expensive. And I thought, no, no, she gets it all. And she has told me, she's now 19. Mm-hmm. She has told me that when, when I'm painting and doing stuff like that, I'm a four. When mm-hmm. I'm doing this, I'm a seven. When I'm doing, and I thought, hallelujah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah, it is great. Mm-hmm. She's picking and choosing and accessing and building up. Mm. Um, her possibilities, Mm -hmm. which is one of the things that the lines of connection offer us is potentials and possibilities. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, I have changed a great deal about how I teach the Enneagram. Um, In terms of the lines, Catherine, or all of it? because, Because of the wings, because of looking at how all of it is important and all of it is accessible Mm -hmm. and we leave a part of us out of it at our peril. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I have a lot of one. I was raised by a family that was ones. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. But I can also be much more loving and compassionate Mm -hmm. now that I realize I have access to two. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, that, where I would like to teach or as soon yeah. as somebody says I'm this and nothing more <laughs> you don't like it yeah 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 my goal in life <laughs> is to have people look at yeah I do that too yeah yeah I, I, yeah I do that too and it the light bulbs go off and mm-hmm. this and I think this defensive thing about oh I'm so much better whatever mm-hmm. style we are yeah. We're more pure. Yeah. We're more exempt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. Yep. You do that too. Mm-hmm. I don't mean you. I'm glad I'm this old. 
and I've had time. <laughs> I really am, you know, because if I weren't, I'd be dead. Um, but it's given me time to kind of move away from you're this style, you're going to be the style the rest of your life. Here are all the things you do and don't do and kind of move into, okay, that's a place to start. Yeah. And those things are true, but so is everything else. Mm-hmm. So open up, open up to all the other possibilities. Now that's probably driving people crazy, but oh from, well. Yeah. from my perspective, yeah. that's accurate. Mm-hmm. Well, question bubbling up. You know, you've been around the Enneagram a long time. Like I, I've been around it, what, seven years, right? And I don't know, I get into a place sometimes where I feel like there's not a lot left to learn. And you must really get to that place. Do you feel like, I don't know, Catherine, is it still alive for you, the Enneagram? Or, or, and does it still support you in your development? Or are you just... To be really honest with you, mm. I went through a stage where I felt I was done. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. You know, but because I keep getting bugged by the eight and by the six, I go, no, you're not done, honey. You're not <laughs> done. Not, back into the fray you go. Um, I think I see it very differently. Mm. As a newbie, I was so excited to be typed. Yeah. And then it took a while to be untyped, hmm. to move from the side. Okay, I'm this, but I'm also this, and this, and I do this. And, and so now I feel like it's a good place to start. Mm. And I think there's probably more seven-ish traits, qualities, behaviors that I do um, than other things. Mm-hmm. But I do a lot of things. I have a lot of responses. I have a lot of ideas. Mm. Um, I find it, this is going to get me into trouble. I find it difficult to read some of the new-ish literature. Um, First of all, it's written by people who haven't lived long enough. Yeah, yeah. It's true, isn't it? It is. For you teachers that have been around for a while, I want, I imagine you getting together and laughing, laughing at us. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do you do it? Is that what you guys do? Yeah. Just um, we just sit around and gossip. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, well, now, are, are you familiar at all with Mario Socorro's instinctual biases? I am. I love Mario. I love his yes, work. I do too. Yeah. And when I found out those new words and new definitions Mm -hmm. and came at subtypes from the idea that they are biases that we've developed over a long time. And it's our way of behaving what we do, not who I am, but what I do, I was like, oh yeah, I am so in for that. Mm -hmm. It's so, I never, I would tell people I'm social. And I never agreed with at least half of every social description. Mm, Yep. So now that I'm navigating, I'm like, yeah, bingo, that's me. That's it. Mm. And including some things about um, playing close to my vest. Mm -hmm. I'm very willing to talk about things and ideas and other people and helping them. But don't ask me about me. That's private. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't want people to know too much about this. Yeah. Um, so there's, I think there's transitions that the Enneagram community is going through, and I hope it survives. Mm, it, yeah, that's interesting. I can't, I, it never occurred to me that it wouldn't survive. Um, okay, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for your time. No, thank you. What an opportunity. The next interview where it's back to rapid fire style is with Saleh Velanda, who maybe you know about. He has produced a number of exciting books lately.